Hello YouTubers, this is Triple Seven Die Hard Forever coming at you with another highly anticipated and highly recommended mod. Today I'll be doing a review on a Gemini Jets British Airways Concorde SST which stands for Supersonic Transport in their Lander livery scheme in a 1-200 scale model. I purchased this model from Troy's Toys whose store is based out of Overland Park, Kansas here in the United States of America and his website address is www.troystoysinc.com but first, allow me to share some information about the history of British Airways, if you would please. The British Airways Group was established on September 1st, 1972. Then fast forward to March 31st, 1974. That's when British Airways became established as an airline and commenced operations by the dissolution of BOAC, which stands for British Overseas Airways Corporation, and BEA, which stands for British European Airways. British Airways is the national flag carrier airline of the United Kingdom as well as the largest airline in the United Kingdom based on fleet size and the second largest airline after EasyJet based on the number of passengers carried as the headquarters of British Airways is located in the Waterside Building in the Harmonsworth section of London, England which is a village located in the borough of Hillendon that's located northwest of Heathrow Airport while the airline's main base of operations is located on the grounds of London Heathrow Airport, which is located approximately 14 miles west of central London, and also has a major presence at Gatwick Airport, which is located approximately 30 miles south of central London. British Airways currently flies to 183 destinations worldwide on six inhabited continents, as British Airways is one of nine airlines to own this distinction of permanently flying to all six inhabited continents, along with Air Canada, Air China, Delta Airlines, Emirates, Korean Air, Qantas, Qatar Airways, and South African Airways respectively. As of March 2018 or at the time of this video review posting, British Airways has an operating fleet of 269 aircraft with no unfulfilled orders pending on this particular aircraft, as this particular aircraft is no longer operating in the British Airways fleet. And also as of March 2018 or at the time of this video review posting, British Airways currently operates as a certified four-star airline carrier according to the international airline review firm Skytrax magazine. Alright everyone, let's take a look at the front of the box you see there. You see the Gemini 200 decal, the British Airways title, the ribbon logo, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, the aircraft type Concorde, the 1-200 scale diecast aircraft model, as well as the item number information at the lower part of the box. Now looking at the back of the box, you see more Gemini Jets information as well as their Facebook, social media page information there as well. Now you're looking at the top of the box where you see the Gemini 200 decal along with the warning information at the top of the box. As well as the bottom box. You can read and pause and read that if you like. Alright. Now you're looking at the uh, left side of the box where you see the Gemini 200 decal, the 1-200 scale diecast model information, as well as the computer generated picture of the aircraft, the aircraft type Concorde, as well as the item number on the left side of the box. Now you're looking at the right side of the box, the same information on the left side of the box that I showed you early on, okay? Now you're looking at the front of the box with the box laid out on the table and the reason I got this position here is a, it's some information on about this uh, particular aircraft on the uh, other side of the flap. But before I show you that information, I'm going to let you see what's inside the uh, box. Check it out. And that's what you see there. I'm going to take all that out. But what you see momentarily is the gear replacements, the model itself, as well as the model stand. But before I take all that, I'm going to let you see what's inside that flap that I was telling you about earlier. Okay, here it is. All right, this is what's inside the flap that I pulled up earlier that you see there. You can pause and read all that if you like. That's concerning this uh, particular aircraft. Now, there's all the information you need to read right there, okay? All right, I finally put out all the, the packaging out of the box, and this is what you see here, partial plastic and partial foam. Now, I'm going to take the top part, which is the partial plastic. I'm going to take that off right there. You see right there. Now, you got a better idea of what you're seeing right there the gear replacement doors, the model itself, as well as the model stand. I'm going to take all that out now and let you see it individually. Check it out. Now you're looking at the nice little metal model stand that came with the model with the nice little wood-like finish there. 
and then you see that black pattern right there on the top of the mouse then. The purpose of that black pattern is to prevent your mouth from being damaged or scratched, what have you. That's what that black pattern there is there for, folks. Now you're looking at this plastic bag and what's in inside of this plastic bag. You see the visor that goes on the, uh, the aircraft. I'll put that on momentarily. As well as the gear replacement door featuring the two little toothpicks. Please stay tuned as I go into detail for the purpose of these gear replacement doors later on in the round review. Okay? Alright. With all that information out of the way about the history of British Airways. All the details here on this box. Including the uh, information inside of the flap. The metal model stand as well as the gear replacements and the, uh, the visor inside the, uh, the plastic bag there. With no further ado everyone, here is the model out of the packaging box. Check it out. There it is everyone, the Gemini Jets British Airways Concorde SST which stands for Supersonic Transport in their lander livery scheme in a 120 scale model. Let me share you some information about the uh, British Airways Concorde SST Supersonic Transport and how it was acquired in their fleet. All right. British Airways was one of two carriers. Air France was the other carrier that operated the supersonic Aerial Spatiale BAC Concorde, receiving their very first Concorde, which bared the registration ship number G BOAA, on January 14, 1976. And the world's first supersonic passenger service began and flew one week later on January 21, 1976, with the first inaugural flight from London Heathrow to Bahrain. Services to the U.S. officially began on May 24, 1976 with a flight from London Heathrow to Washington, Dulles. And flights to New York's John F. Kennedy International Airport soon followed on September 22, 1977. However, and unfortunately, following the Air France Concorde crash, which occurred on July 25, 2000 in Paris, France, along with the slump in air travel following the September 11, 2001 attacks in New York, Washington, D.C., and Pennsylvania, respectively, British Airways decided to cease Concorde operations in 2003 after 27 years of service. The final commercial Concorde flight was British Airways flight BA002 from New York JFK to London Heathrow on October 24, 2003. The British Airways Concorde SST supersonic transport made just under 50,000 flights and flew more than 2.5 million passengers supersonically. And with a takeoff speed of 250 miles per hour and a cruising speed of 1,350 miles per hour, more than twice the speed of sound, a typical London to New York crossing would take a little less than three and a half hours as opposed to about eight hours for a subsonic flight. Concorde's fastest transatlantic crossing took place on February 7, 1996, when it completed the New York to London flight, which clocked in at two hours, 52 minutes, and 59 seconds. The British Airways fleet of seven Concorde supersonic aircraft has since been dispersed per for preservation at the following locations. Barbados, registration ship number G-BOAE, Edinburgh, Scotland, registration ship number G-BOAA, Filton, Bristol, England, registration ship number G-BOAF, Manchester, England, registration ship number G-BOAC, which is this aircraft here. New York, registration ship number G-BOAD, and Seattle, Washington, registration ship number G-BOAG. With one Concorde, however, which bears the registration ship number G-BOAB, remains at Heathrow Airport in London, England. Alright, now let's talk about this nice little livery here. On December 4th, 1984, British Airways unveiled a new identity with the new livery scheme, which was called the Landor Livery Scheme. As the most distinctive change to this livery scheme was the addition of the red speed wing cheat line which runs along the entire part of the fuselage. The Landor livery scheme was actually developed and created by the consultancy firm of Landor Associates whose global headquarters is located in San Francisco, California. So, with all that information out of the way about the, the history of the Concorde and delivery here, let's get down to business and let me show you all the details and information on this aircraft mount. Shall we? Let's roll. All right, we're going to start at the front of the aircraft on the port side. We see the uh, Peter tubes and static ports, what have you. And then you see the antenna that's on the nose cone right there, the um, droop nose cone right here. That antenna is actually called a pitted antenna. That's what that antenna there, okay? 
Now let's check out the nose cone right here. This this little distinctive feature right there. Right there. Okay. This distinctive feature on some of the supersonic aircraft, such as the Concorde and the Tupolev Tu-144, is actually called a droop nose. And when these aircraft were in service, the pilot would lower the nose cone to improve visibility of the runway and taxiways. When in flight, the nose would be raised. The Concorde also had a moving visor that would slide into and out of the nose, which would be this little deal right here. The nose can be drooped to one or two positions, five degrees. I'm going to show you that right here, right there, for taxing and takeoff, and the fully drooped 12 and a half degree position used for the landing, right there. So the pilots can see the approaching runway in its entirety. The Concorde droop nose was designed and manufactured under subcontract by Marshall Aerospace, whose headquarters is located in Cambridge, England. Okay, I'm going to roll that back up right here. And then you're looking at the um, the cockpit windows right there. Okay. And then you see that antenna that sits beneath the cockpit windows and next to the droop nose cone, which is this little deal right there. This antenna is actually called a pitted head ice detector head antenna. That's what they're called there, folks. And you see the uh, red speed line cheat line right there that goes across the, uh, all the way back to the rear of the aircraft right there. Awesome. And then you see the British Airways title right there, along with the uh, inboard landing light right here on the edge of the wing, as well as the realistic landing gears right here, the landing gear struts, as well as the landing gear door right there, partial registration ship number there, AC. Okay, we had to send the aircraft on the port side, and I got it at this angle for a reason. Because you're looking at the wings, you see these wings right here, these looking distinctive looking wings there. These wings are called the Orgivol Delta Wings. And when the supersonic transport SST was developed, these wings were chosen for this particular aircraft. And the purpose of these wings is that the rearward sweep angle lowers the airspeed normal to the leading edge of the wing thereby allowing the aircraft to fly at high subsonic, transonic, or supersonic speeds, while the overwing speed of the lifting air is kept to less than the speed of sound. This allows both improved maneuverability and low installing speeds of this aircraft. Okay, I'm going to let you see, uh, see these um, wings at a different angle from a bird's eye angle. Check it out. Now you're looking at them uh, wings from a bird's eye view, which I find impressive. I'll show you those again later on in the review, all right? Now you got a better visual view of the landing bogey gears here on the port side. You no, know, they're very metal and very realistic in detail, featuring the landing gear doors there as well. And then you see that nice little engine there by the gear there. These are the Rolls-Royce Olympus 593-610 engines that was used on this particular British Airways aircraft, the Concorde SST supersonic aircraft. Okay, that's the whole air, that's the whole engine right there. Okay, now I'm gonna let you see the front of the engine. So check it out. Now you're looking at the front of the um, engine right here. The uh, the Rolls Royce Olympi Olympus Olympus uh, 593-610 engine right there. And you got a better visual view of the landing gears here. The landing gear struts, the landing gear door there as well. And then you come over here. Got a better visual view of the uh, inboard landing light right there. Now you're looking at the engine in front of the engine on the starboard side. There's no turbo fan blades in there. That's just what it is. You got a better visual view of the uh, landing gears there, as well as the inboard landing light on this side here, right there. Now you're looking at the front of the aircraft, you know, you see the nose gears, the nose gear struts, the, um, the droop nose cone, the, uh, the pitted antenna. You also see you got a better visual view of the uh, cockpit windows as well as the visor. I took the actual visor off, so you got a better visual view of that. And it includes the ice detected heads on both sides here as well. Now I'm going to put the, um, the, the actual visor back on here get let you get a better view of it. Check it out. Okay, now you got now I got the visor back on the, um, 
the model there you're looking at it with the uh, droop low droop nose uh, cone in the down position since it landed now I'm gonna show it to you at a different angle with the droop nose up check it out there it is right there the uh, visor on there with the uh, droop nose cone up in effect all right I've got to add one add show tell you one feature right here you see the red navigation light right there on the uh, edge of that uh, Orvigo Delta wing right there now now you're looking at the back of the uh, engines here on the uh, port side the reverse thrusters there but before I show you that I'm gonna let you see this warning here first because that's a real delicate part of the model right there you see all that right there I'm gonna I'm gonna let you see it in time to check it out hold on now you know that part of the reverse thrusters on the engine I showed you earlier this is the warning information do not if you're going to touch your hand, please be careful. They tell you not to because that will break and it's hard to put it back on there, okay? Just let you know that. I'm going to go back and show you that part, okay? Here it is. All right, we have the back of the reverse thrusters there. I'm going to show you that again. There. There. And there right there. Okay, you see it has, uh, oh, see the reverse thrusters? Now I'm going to put them back there. 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 Okay. Now, I'm going to um, show you the reverse thrusters on the other side as well. Check it out. Now, you're looking at the reverse thrusters uh, here on the uh, starboard side. Same thing. Right there. Right there. Right there. Okay. See it right there? Very impressive. Put it back on there. 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 Okay. See that there? Impressive. Okay. Now we're at the back of the aircraft here on the uh, port side where you see the red straight ship number right underneath the, uh, the red speed wing cheat line, red cheat line right there you see there, red straight ship number G-BOAC. Red straight ship number G-BOAC. This was the second Concord to enter the British Airways fleet and the first test flight on this aircraft took place on February 27, 1975 and was delivered to British Airways on February 13, 1976. This aircraft was finally withdrawn from the British Airways fleet on October 23, 2003 as this aircraft is currently preserved and stored up at the Aviation Viewing Park which is located in Manchester, England. Alright, we still at the back of the aircraft and you see right here on the lower part of the uh, the tail which is right here that is called the rudder hydraulic accumulator and it's a act and it's actually a hydraulic motor which directly converts hydraulic pressure into mechanical action to move the rudder of the tail and then you look at the coat of arms logo right here right there this logo can be seen on just about every British Airways aircraft flying today as the coat of arms logo also displays British Airways commitment in providing great customer service to every passenger. This has been British Airways main mission objective since its inception. Also inside the lower part of the logo features a motto that British Airways actually goes by. It's called to fly to serve. It's about right down in there. Uh, I don't want to bring it too close there, but it's right in there. So there you have it right there. And then now you're looking at the, uh, the antenna on the upper part of the tail right here. That is called the VOR and aerial antenna. And these antennas are called VOR, which stands for Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Radio Range Antennas, which is a type of short range radio navigation system for aircraft, enabling aircraft with the receiving unit to determine the position and stay on course by receiving radio signals transmitted by a network of fixed ground beacons, as the VOR is a standard air navigation system in the world used by both commercial and aviation and then you see this little gear here this little extra gear right there this particular gear is called the tail bumping landing gear and the retractable tail bumping then the retractable tail bumper gear was designed to protect the rear of the Concorde during takeoff and landing since it needed a high angle of attack to optimize lip from its delta wings okay and then the back there right here, you see the red navigation light right there at the end of the tail. Now you're looking at the, uh, the British Airways Concorde SST Supersonic Transport in their lander delivery from the rear view angle. You also see the reverse thrusters which I find impressive as well as over here as well. Okay. 
Now you're looking at the front of the aircraft on the uh, starboard side, where you see the, um, the the pitted antenna here. You see the Peter Tune static port, the droop nose cone, the um, the pitted antenna. That's the ice detector head antenna there. Sorry about that. See the visor here on the uh, cockpit window, the cockpit windows. You see the British Airways title. You see the inboard landing light here on the starboard side. The, the landing nose gear right here. The nose gear struts. The landing gear door right there with your partial registration ship number on there. AC. You see the British Airways title along with the uh, red speed wing, uh, speed wing uh, cheat line that goes across the uh, aircraft here on this side here as well. Now I'm looking at the uh, the Orgival Delta wings here from the uh, bird's eye view on the uh, starboard side featuring the green navigation light right there displayed there on the edge of the wing. Now underneath the uh, the Orgival Delta wings you got a better visual view of the landing bogey gears here on the starboard side including the landing gear door and then you're looking at the uh, Rolls Royce Olympus 593-610 engines here on the starboard side with all the nice little details there as well. Now you're at the back of the aircraft on the uh, starboard side where you see the reverse thrusters there that I showed you earlier. There. There. And then you see the cargo door right here. The AFT boat bin cargo door right there where you put all your cargo and that. The limit is two and a half tons there. That's the most you can put in there. The registration ship number. You see the um, you see the uh, rudder hydraulic actuator right here. Oh, it's on the other side right here. And then you see the uh, VOR aerial antenna right here, as well as the Air, uh, the British Airways coat of arms logo right there. And then you see the extra uh, landing gear, which I mentioned earlier, is called the tail bumping landing gear right there. And then right here back here, you see the green navigation light on that side of the aircraft. Okay. Now, before I show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model, as well as this undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model, I will show you the, the rolling gears, but they do not roll, so I'm not going to waste my time on that part. But I will show you that it does tilt, which is pretty cool there. So, with that being said, allow me to show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft. Let's check it out. Alright, now we're going to start at the aerial bird's eye view, where you start at the front here. We see the pitted antenna, the droop nose cone, the visor on the win uh, cockpit window right there along the cockpit window. You see the ice detector head antenna right there. You see the high frequency antenna there. Emergency escape hatch door right there. And then you see the uh, the Orgival Delta wings right there. And then we come back here. You see the two little lines right there. Those are the ADF antennas right there. Another emergency escape hatch door right there. Uh, the tail right there okay then we come over here on the wing over here give you a better visual closer up right there there's the wing walkway right there there's a little warning line right there the reverse thrusters right there the edge of the wing there on this side here folks see right here the little wing walkway there a little warning information there well over there as well the reverse thrusters and the edge of the wing on this side here as well Okay, now you look at the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft where you see the, uh, the pitted antenna, the droop nose cone underneath there, the ice detector head antenna there, the closed nose gear door, as well as the open nose gear door featuring the nose gear right there. You see the um, high frequency antenna there, the hole where the stand goes in at, the Gemini Jets logo. Then you come right there, the extra landing gear right there all right and then let's check over here there's the gears right there they don't tilt okay there's the flat slats aileron spoils what have you there's the uh, Rolls Royce Olympus 593-610 engines right there with all the details right there the registration ship number and this over here is flat slats aileron spoilers what have you the gears there the uh, Rolls Royce Olympus 593-610 engine on this side as well as over here as well
All right, since I'll show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model, as well as the undercarriage bell view of this aircraft model in full detail. Now I'm gonna put it on that nice little wood metal model stand that came with the model per se. So with no further ado, here is the model on the stand. Check it out. All right, fine, got this model on the stand. You see it in a uh, takeoff landing position there with the gears intact here on the port side with the model on the stand. Now you're looking at the front of the aircraft with all with the um, Rolls Royce Olympus 593 engines here, over here, as well as over there as well. Everything intact on this front part of the aircraft. Now you're looking at this model being displayed in the takeoff landing position uh, on the starboard side with the model on the stand. And finally, you're seeing this model in the takeoff landing position from the tail cam angle featuring the reverse thrusters on these engines here right there awesome okay before I take this model off the stand I got it in this position for a reason and the reason I'm going to go ahead and take these gears off starting with the nose gear right here first right there the gear here on the port side there the gear here on the uh, starboard side there as well as the um, extra landing bump gear at the back of the aircraft. Here it is. Check it out. Just to let you know, this, this comes out as well. So I'm going to take that out. You see that right there? Okay. There it is right there. So with that being said, with all the gears out there, I'm going to let you see this model entirely at a, at a different angle without the gears. Check it out. Okay. Now you're seeing this model being displayed without the gears in, in flight mode position. You see there? Now you got one or two options how you want to display your model. Either way is great, okay? If you want to continue to leave it like that without the gears on it, that's fine. You see these little uh, gear replacement doors in here? That's the purpose of these gear replacement doors to substitute your model while you display your model in flight mode. Or you can keep it in a uh, gear down position, you know, with the gears on there. That's your choice. Either way, it don't matter. I choose to keep mine on there because it adds more value to the model. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and put these gears back on this model, take this model stand, and go ahead and wrap up this model review, okay? Alright, let's talk about the seating configuration. The British Airways Concorde SST supersonic transport seated 100 passengers in a one-class configurated cabin layout. Here's the breakdown everyone, from rows 1 to 26, which will be from here all the way back to the rear of the aircraft. You have 100 supersonic class seats, which is pretty much first class for that matter, okay? And finally, British Airways formerly utilized the Concorde SSD supersonic transport on routes from London Heathrow to destinations such as Bridgetown Barbados, Bahrain, Washington Dulles, New York JFK, Miami via Washington Dulles, Dallas Fort Worth via Washington Dulles, Singapore via Bahrain, and Toronto on a seasonal basis. Where everyone Sorry about the lengthy video, but this is all I have for right now, and this will pretty much conclude this model review. I'd like to know if you got this model, or you plan on getting this model, if you can find it, because it's, it's becoming very scarce and hard to find as we speak, okay? So with that said, please rate, subscribe, leave me your comments and suggestions. So with that said, take care, God bless, stay tuned, there's more model content coming. Peace.